Hi, and welcome to the universe of energy. How are you? No need to answer. You know, you're probably surprised to see me here, aren't you? But then there's probably a lot of places you'd be surprised to see me when you think about it. If you were driving in your car, for instance, okay? Close your eyes, you're in your car. No, close your eyes in the car. But right now, think about it. You're in your car, you're driving, and then all of a sudden, from the back seat, I just pop up and go, hey! You just whack me in the head, wouldn't you? That would be, that wouldn't be nice. But then it wouldn't be nice for me to do that to you. How'd I get in your car anyway? Can you, did you lock the car? Maybe it was your fault. Maybe I'm just teaching you a lesson. But the point is, to see me here as a spokesperson for the universe of energy, I mean, that's crazy, you know. I mean, I'm an expert on a lot of things. You know that, I know that. But uh, not a lot of things, a few things. But energy, I mean, there was a time I could care less about it. And then suddenly everything changed. One day I was sitting in my apartment. I, I said I was sitting in my apartment when... There it is. I don't feel so snatched. She, I mean, I can't hear me. Hey, hey, you! How about sharing some of those chips? No, you're on a diet. Me, not you. Anyway, I'm watching TV and my favorite show is about to start. This is Jeff. Yes! Well, this is my favorite show. What is? Who is it? And of course, no one locks their doors in New York. Hey, it's your neighbor, Bill Nye, the science guy. Hey, Bill Nye, the science guy. It's Ellen, the, uh... Just Ellen, I guess. What can I do you for? I'd like to borrow some aluminum foil, a clothespin and a candle. Another hot day, huh? Actually, I'm working on a new experiment. Uh, take care of you need. I don't want to miss any of the game. What are you watching? Jeopardy. Yes. <laughs> Oh my gosh! What? It's my old college roommate, Judy Peterson. She was such a smarty pants, know it all. I had the best nickname for her, though. What was that? Stupid Judy. No, well, that makes no sense. She has a PhD. I know, but it made me feel better. So now I guess she's some hot shot energetic professor. She's a professor of energy. Whatever. Who cares about stupid Judy and her stupid energy? Ellen, energy's the most important thing in. The universe! Oh, yeah, sure. Take her side. I'm not taking her side. It's just that without energy, nothing would go. Nothing would happen. I mean, there'd be nothing. Well, then we'd really be in jeopardy now, wouldn't we? <laughs> yeah. Well, what is, uh, thanks for the supplies, and, uh, see you later. What is, bye-bye. Right -bye. again. Right again, Judy. Stupid Judy, stupid energy. Maybe the universe needs energy, but I don't. I'll take a nap for a hundred. <laughs> I know. Big piece of corn right there in the teeth. How could you not see? <clears throat> now, as most of you know, when someone falls asleep watching TV, that person is going to have a what? Anyone? Anyone? That's right, my own dream sequence. Right. Mine was more of a nightmare, actually. And uh, this is, actually, we should get some fog in here. Always nice to spice up a dream sequence with fog. No, not in here. Over there. The dream. Scary, huh? you in the game. Here are the categories for the first round of play. Solar energy, wind power, energy from water, fossil fuels, fusion, and finally, gas. Ellen, since this is your dream, we'll let you make the first selection. Uh, I would take um, fossil fuels for, uh, oh, let's go for 100. Fine. The answer is, this was formed from microscopic plants and animals trapped in ocean floor sediments millions of years ago. Ellen. Yes, I know that one. That's, uh, that uh, is, uh, what, what is, what is uh, the 
stuff trap, microscopic fuels and in, in plants and, and animals and... In, 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 Sorry, Ellen. We were looking for something more than just an embellishment of what I had already said. Anyone else? Judy? What is petroleum, Alex? What is bituminous? What is solar thermal conversion? What is hydroelectric? What is helium? And so, as we come to the end of the first one, ladies and gentlemen, Judy has been commanding lady. Ellen has her work cut out for her. And Dr. Einstein is nowhere, relatively speaking. Is this a nightmare or what? Oh, Ellen, your first correct response. Wait a minute. Freeze! This is my dream. I'm in control now. I can still win. I still have a chance to. Ellen! Ellen! Who is it? It's me, Bill Nye the Science Guy. Hey, I'm glad you came to help me. Actually, I came to see Einstein. Wow, you're getting clobbered. Yeah, this Nightmare Jeopardy version's a lot harder than the home version. Can you help me? Sure, but first we have to go back. Back stage? No, no, no. Way back, like many billion years ago. Okay, but can we stop at a mini bar or something and get some snacks? Because I have a tendency to get hungry after a couple billion years. No can do. Time's a waste of time. Come on! Wait, it's not even over. It gets really weird from here. Now some person I don't even know reminds me there's no eating, drinking, smoking, or flash photography allowed in my dream. Please, no eating, drinking, smoking, or flash photography while in Ellen's dream. And those of you who are just walking in right now, you're late. Where have you been? I love your hair. No, not you. No, I mean, it's all right, but... That's cute, yeah. Um, anyway, so you're not completely lost. Here's a recap of what has been going on. I'm Ellen. Hi. I love Jeopardy. I used to not care about energy at all until I had a nightmare that I was on Jeopardy and all the categories were about energy. <laughs> oh, don't I know it's scary. So my neighbor, Bill Nye, stepped in to help me out. Bill Nye, the science guy. You know him? Anyway, so he comes in to help me out. That's what's going on. Got it? Good. If you don't, then that's your problem because you're late. And, and you think about that next time. Ladies and gentlemen, the next part of Ellen's dream is a 37 minute slow moving ride. If you will not be able to stay with us for the entire 37 minutes, we can use you to exit out of this time using the double doors over to your far left. In just a moment, the automatic doors on both sides of you will be opening up towards you for your safety. Rose, and just a reminder, there may be no flash pictures or external video lighting inside Ellen's mind, because we don't want to wake her up and spoil the dream. Thank you. Trait. You brought me back billions of years so you could show me nothing? Sort of, uh, but out of this nothingness, many scientists believe the universe was born. Must have been a big delivery, huh? Uh, yeah. Uh, see that single point of very hot, very dense matter? It contains all the energy of the universe, and it's about to expand at an astonishing rate. <laughs> oh, here. Better put these on. Hearing protectors. Because it's the Big Bang. The Piggy Bang? No, the Big Bang. The Big Bang? The Big Bang. Oh. <laughs> now, what you're about to witness took place over billions of years. Oh, boy. Uh, better take cover. All right, universe, you cleared for takeoff. Come on. <laughs>
60 million years in the Earth's past, give or take a uh, day. Bill? Bill, I, I know I asked you to help me with this energy stuff and everything, but I was kind of hoping you'd show me a slideshow. A slideshow? I guess that'd be easier, but <laughs> this is way more fun. Uh, yeah, this is fun. Where's the energy? Oh, it's all around you. See, these plants and animals are soaking up energy from the sun. When they die and get buried, time, pressure, and heat will cook them into the fossil fuels we rely on today. Like uh, coal, natural gas, and oil. Wait a minute, you're telling me that we're filling our gas tanks with, well, with dinosaur soup? Well, not exactly, but dinosaurs did live when fossil fuels were developing in the earth. <laughs> dinosaurs are just cool. Let's check them out. Why don't we just skip to the air conditioning and jacuzzi period, huh? Alan, it's a chance of a lifetime. It's the chance of a hundred million lifetimes. Come on. You go ahead and make sure it's safe. I'll wait here, okay? You might as well go too. This is my nightmare. No need you staying with me. Maybe I'll go. What am I so scared of? It's just a dinosaur. Big deal about dinosaurs, they're not so tough. They probably have a brain the size of a pea. Ah. I hope you're not upset about that heat rain crack. Because you know that that I think of it, I'm sure these are much larger in this time period. I happen to love peas, don't you?
Now we're exactly where we need to be. All we need now is Ellen. Bill? Bill, Bill, Bill? Oh, Bill, Bill. Ellen? Oh, there you are. Yeah, here I am. <laughs> yeah, look, you know, it's not like I don't like getting attacked by a snake-like creature. It's just... See, we're at the dawn of the human age. And one of our ancestors is about to make an important discovery. One that will spark the progress of civilization. Let's hope it's deodorant. But it's getting there. Okay, in the meantime, let's just pick another category. All right. Today, we're using the clean energy of moving air, wind, to generate electricity. Well, then why don't we just get a bunch of wind farmers to harvest a big old crop of wind? We're starting to, where it's windy. But remember, to power a whole city, you need a whole lot of windmills. And when the wind stops blowing, we'd be left in the dark, wouldn't we? No way. We just switch to another source of energy. and are renewed by this natural resource. What is rain? Correct. So we just uh, build more dams and our energy problems are solved. Not quite. We've already used many of the best sites. 
And sometimes building a dam can be pretty hard on an ecosystem. Seems like there are pros and cons to every one of these. What gives? Well, Alan, there are no easy answers. The sun, water, geothermal steam, even wood all contribute. Right now, these renewables provide about 10% of the world's energy. But we can expect them to be playing an even bigger role in the decades ahead. That's great, Bill, but we still need a heck of a lot more energy. Where's it coming from? And do you have a curly iron? Come on, I'll show you. have already been tapped. Hello? Most new discoveries will come from once inaccessible or hard to reach places. Wait just a minute, there's oil here? Actually, the oil is buried way deep under the ocean floor. Oh, well then I guess we can't get to it. So, where to next? Oh hey, don't give up. We can reach the oil with offshore drilling platforms like this. Going in. platforms are so tall, they would tower over the Empire State Building. I mean, that's big! Oh, great. Just what my nightmare needs. Big old human munching, bone crunching, Ellen luncheon shark. Take her up, Captain! Rise! Rise! See, today we take atoms like these and split them apart to release energy. It's called fission. I think it's double jeopardy, Ellen. There you are! Where have you been? The beginning of the universe. There were dinosaurs, and... And, and I was in the bathroom. There are no more paper towels. Yeah, right. Could we get Ellen to the set, please? Well, you've been absolutely amazing so far. Blowing away the opponents here. <laughs> well, my IQ is 210. But I'll tell you something, Judy. The thing that really amazed me was that you and Ellen were in the same class yes. at school. We were actually roommates. I used to call her stupid Ellen. <laughs> okay. All right, players, we're ready to begin the second round. And Ellen, would you start us off by making a selection, please? I sure will, Alex. I will take dinosaurs for 800. Uh, 
Ellen, you do know that the more expensive the question, the harder it is. Oh, no, I did. Let me rethink that then. Uh, dinosaurs for 1,000, Alex. Okay, the answer is, this is when scientists believe dinosaurs first appeared on the Earth. Ellen. Uh, what is 220 million years ago, give or take a day? You're absolutely right. What is the sun? What is hydrogen, Alex? What are photovoltaics? What is fire? Which, by the way, is what sparked the progress of human civilization. Alex, I don't know if you knew that or not. Correct again, Ellen. And amazingly enough, at the end of this double jeopardy round, you have managed to come from way behind to tie Judy for the lead. Well done. Well, I just had to figure out how to work this little clicky thing here. She possibly learned so much during the commercial break. She's obviously cheating. Sip it, Judy. Dr. Einstein. You have no money, sir, and that means we're going to have to say goodbye. However, we want to thank you for coming here today, and we do have some lovely party gifts for you backstage. Yes, here's a party gift for you right now, Al. It's a long-lasting, low-energy light bulb. Enjoy the efficiency. Boy, there goes a real bundle of energy, huh? All right, ladies. You will recall that our final Jeopardy! category on today's program is the future of energy. And so if you're ready, here is the final Jeopardy! answer for you. This is the one source of power that will never run out. Good luck. see how well you did. Judy, we'll start with you. You wrote down nothing. That's correct, Alex, because there is no answer. Well, actually, you're wrong. Let's take a look at your wager. Oh, that's too bad. You risk everything you had, and that means you lose $17,800, and you wind up with nothing. Let's go down to Ellen now and see what she came up with as a response to our final Jeopardy clue. Ellen? Uh, what is brain power, Alex? You are correct. And your wager? You too risk everything, but you double your score to 35,600, and that makes you, Ellen, our new Jeopardy champion. Congratulations. Be sure to tune in tomorrow as Jeopardy Twin Secrets Week continues. So that's how I became an energy expert. Again, expert may not be the exact right word, more expert ish. Anyway, I've got to go. Look out for the dinosaur! <laughs> Kidding. I'm a kidder. Bye-bye now. Please gather your personal belongings, get all downstairs by the hand, and exit towards open doors. Have a magical day. Here, right up, Doc.
Come on, come on, come on.